Biden, our friend Joe, our good friend Joe, he's been taking photo ops with Chris Smalls and several members of the Amazon Labor Union. You know, he's been talking about being a good Democrat union guy. And of course, we know that he's been talking out of both sides of his mouth because that's Joe Biden and that's always been who he is. But people still want to believe that somebody will save them, right? That something's going to happen, that Chris Malls is magically going to come in there and everything will be, you know, oh, this is great. Now unions will be respected. No, Democrats have long backed unions, but unions have turned corrupt because this is what happens. I mean, Pasta talks about Jimmy Hoffa all the time, but he's not the only one. Mm -hmm. Um So Sanders wrote a very angry worded letter, not even, it wasn't even angry worded. He called on Joe Biden to cut Amazon out of the US federal uh, contracts. And um, so another thing that I'm gonna do is get LASIK because I gotta be reading stuff and like I have astigmatism. Anyway, so Bernie Sanders said uh, on April 26, around that time, he said that he asked Joe Biden to issue an executive order to cut off the federal contracts to Amazon.com until the e-commerce company stopped what he said was illegal anti-union activity. And he said in particular, as you may know, Amazon, one of the largest and most profitable corporations in America is the poster child as to why this anti-union busting executive order is needed now more than ever. Sanders said in a letter to Biden, which political reported on. Now, in spite of Bernie doing that, and in spite of this, look at the pictures uh, of Biden, Kamala, and mm-hmm. then you have Chris Malls, who has been on the show before. I have nothing against the guy. Um, you know, like I, I'm not, you know, I support unions, but at this t- at this time, you need more than than just like than unions, you know, you because you're still working within the system. And then, of course, he took another picture with him. They, it was great. Uh, Chris Smalls made a tweet saying, you know, oh, I met the, with the president. And so all these people, all these, you know, cappuccino commies and uh, champagne socialists, right? They're like so happy. And this guy says, do you think Trump would be inviting Chris Smalls and the union movement to the White House? I don't love Biden. Heck, I don't even like him. I don't really like him. But this is fire. So all it takes is a photo op for these people to, you know, to say, okay, Biden's great now. This is this is how they, these people are so easily like convinced, right? But fam, what ended up happening is that Biden actually approved a huge uh, federal contracts for Amazon anyway, to the point where Jacobin had to write about it. Okay, David Serrata. And Matthew Cunningham wrote this article on Jacobin and on another outlet. And uh, they talked about how Joe Biden in 2020, when he ran, one of the things he talked about was to ensure that companies would only get federal contracts if they were neutral in union elections. And he campaigned on that, just like he campaigned on student debt relief and a, a bunch of other things that he backed away from, right? But Amazon was just awarded $10 billion in federal contracts despite the corporation's union busting, because this is what they've been doing, right? And um, so obviously Joe Biden didn't fulfill his promise. And uh, the contract decision came as Amazon responded to its workers first successful union drive by busting the organization, the organizing drive that followed. And again, um, Joe Biden going back on his promise shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. But I think a lot of these progressives, you know, like I said, they're easily duped. I think they're uh, the most easily duped out of everybody, including Republicans, including Republicans. I think they they latch on to this hope that it's just completely it's just not in the realm of reality. Right. And so um, Biden's National Security Agency, the NSA, ratified a 10 billion dollar uh cloud computing contract for Amazon and that they hired the brother of Biden's top eight as a lobbyist days after the 2020 election. So before he won, he was saying he wasn't going to do that. Days after he won, he went back on his word. And um, the days later, Amazon received the NSA contract. And then the Amazon labor union lost its uh, second union election bid by a two to one margin at another Staten Island warehouse after Amazon mounted a furious campaign to halt the organizing drive. So that's what stopped it essentially, right? Because they were successful at one end and then they got, you know, the the anti-union, 
Amazon uh, came in and they completely destroyed it. So in essence, they say, while Amazon was doubling down on its union busting, the Biden administration was delivering a massive federal contract to the company, signaling to Amazon executives that he is so far in, not interested in fulfilling his pledge. <laughs> so um, this is what Kristen Small said, right? And Crystal Ball retweeted or put on Instagram, just met the president, LOL. He said, I got him in trouble. So good. He put. Okay. So I, I mean, just does he really your believe that this, shit? Fam. Does he really believe that? You know, I mean, does he really believe that, that he got the know, president fam, I... in trouble? Come on, Chris. Come on. And I, you know, and, and the whole thing about going to meet him because you think it's going to elevate the situation. No. No, not even the fact that the co-option that can take place that we've seen from almost every single leftist outlet out there that eventually gets swallowed up by the establishment. Biden was the architect for the conditions that created the fact that you are fighting like the Dickens that we are all living in right now. And NAFTA being yeah. the biggest one, right, sending all the jobs overseas, whatnot, right? Okay, the bankruptcy bill, that was a smack right in the nuts to the middle class working people right there, Okay. All the money for Wall Street. The guy's been a, uh, he's been a, uh, he's been at the top of the food chain for making sure. I mean, in, even in his own goddamn state where he comes from is known as the where, where corporations go to get away with shit. I mean, it's just ridiculous to think that. Number two, you got to use your power for the right, Chris. Use your power. You should have never invited Bernie Sanders and AOC because it's not going to elevate it. You let them know, like, hey, you turned our back on us. You don't come with us. What kind of message do you think that would have sent to the other Congress people out there had you done that? Instead, you will open arms to these people. Oh, this ain't about Republican or Democrat, but let these progressives come on in. And now let's hype up the, the progressives. Just because you say this isn't about Republican or Democrat doesn't mean it's so if the actions don't back it up. And at the end of the day, what did we get? What did we get? Just because you form a union doesn't mean it's going to be great. Doesn't mean you're going to get the working, you know, the conditions that you need. Are we going to be able to see Amazon workers buy houses on their salary the way it was back in the days when our grandparents were working in the factories and working on things over here? Is that what we're going to see? Because if we don't see that, what are we going to get? It's like they threw us in a cage, took away the steak from us, threw a small piece of meat and you said, you see, look what we got. Look what we got. Take a look at this. I mean, this whole thing stinks to high heavens. I mean, and I'm glad you got in there and you fought and you did something. But what do we get? What do we get? We haven't gotten anything yet. We don't know. Use your power correctly. And don't forget that this guy that you're going to shake his hands, he's the one who created all the conditions in which we're swimming in right now. Plain and simple. I mean, fam, years of, of Biden kicking the, the, the working class in the nuts. And now you're going to think that he's going to do something. You really think that he's in trouble for coming to see you? Hell no. They're happy that you went and seen him. They're like, OK, at least he's the, the Democrats are getting this labor movement under control. Let's co-opt yeah. it. And do what we got to do with it. That's, that's what, what it doing. is. Yeah, they're, they're trying to co-opt it. They're trying. There's no way. And I've said this before. You know, you don't get elevated and put in front of Congress um, and you don't get you know, you don't get to go on on all these shows and all this mainstream media without them having an agenda. And you know, if if Chris can see through that and see that they're trying to work him while he's trying to work them, it's because this is what happens. This is why you cannot solve the problem from the same system that created it. Right. So you have to go outside the system. You can't rely on this, the same system or the representatives of that system to fix this because it is beyond reform at this point, because you can't even if you, you have a union, that union easily gets co-opted and then starts being run in a court in the mimicking corporations because we live in in a corporate you know estate like we we live essentially now in, a, in an oligarchy so there's no i'm not saying don't do that i'm saying go outside of the system to do it do not rely on these people make these people come to you instead like yeah. to, to make them try to actually do something and work uh and, and try to to you know you have to have like the upper hand Right now, it's it seems like they're trying to work him, right? They're trying to co-opt this whole thing, and that's that's what I see, unfortunately. Um, yeah. So it's unfortunate, um, but yeah, Biden's always been for big business, fam. In Delaware, it's some of the laxest laws out there for businesses to operate. I mean, he's for big business. He's always been for big business. It shouldn't surprise you that he's going to give a contract to Amazon. Forget about him. I and the guys, and also he's a pathological liar. If we haven't figured that one out yeah. by now, so yeah, bad move. I, so, I, the whole thing just stinks the way it's been handled. So. Yeah. 
And it, it does. And so uh, Biden lies all the time. And Biden um, is just, a, you know, he's a puppet, right, at this point. He's not, people make fun of him. He's not, like, looked on as the strong leader either, okay? And he's not really calling the shots here. As we say, the State Department is pretty much in control. But Biden does this thing, again, where this is the guy you're relying on to do anything for Amazon? Guys, come on. Like, look, he he's announcing that for the first time, Pasta, in over 50 years, the White House will host a conference on hunger, nutrition, and health. Because a conference on hunger, nutrition, and health is really, is really gonna <laughs> wanna feed people. Yeah. Gonna 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 help them really health. We we literally you, you literally are poisoning people in so many ways. I'm not gonna yeah. get into it because we're because we're on YouTube. But let's just leave it at that. The the country that you know has Monsanto, Bayer, Big Pharma is having a a whole thing on hunger, nutrition, and health. While we have like homelessness crisis, inflation, forty year high of inflation, like really. So a conference. Why don't you just fucking help people? Like it's just it's laughable at this point, right? It's ironic to me. The guy who bombs people left and right. You want yeah. to talk about? You know what I'm saying? How many people has he starved out? You know, like, and you're gonna have a con. I listen. I mean, it's I. I almost want to lose it sometimes to think that we're at this point right now where you're going to actually listen to what these people are saying. Every single word, every single day, this guy opens his mouth. And to see idiots online push back and share this stuff. Yay. Go Joe Biden. Let's Move talk about left. how poor you are. <laughs> like, Ma'am, it would have been so much awful if Trump was in there. So you should be thankful. Yeah. It's That's totally, what they say. Totally. Just, just, they just keep rehabilitating Trump, right? Trump, Trump's not here. Yeah. Forget about Trump. You're not allowed to mention Trump. Period. They still mention it. We saw a sign the other day with somebody spinning about Trump's got a small penis. It's like, what does Trump <laughs> got to do with this thing? What's he got to do with this thing? <sighs> so Radical Jesus, uh, this account posted, why are the Dems doing this without first ending the filibuster? They know it won't pass yet. Exactly. Did so you want to play Dems that video, by doing- the way? Oh, are we? No, no, that's okay. Skip it. Okay, good. Yeah, we don't have to hear him. Well, you know what? Fine. Let's let's go ahead and play it. Let's go just just for kicks and giggles. I, it's, it's amusing to watch Biden. Stu- you know. <laughs> Shits and giggles. And nutrition advocates, food companies, local and state governments, tribal and territory communities to lay out our plan to combat hunger and improve nutrition for every American. It really matters. Too many families don't know where they're going to get their next meal. There are too many empty chairs around the kitchen table because a loved one was taken by heart disease, diabetes, or other diet-oriented diseases, which are some of the leading causes of death in our country. And the toll of these diseases are not distributed equally. It's higher in certain racial know, right? ethnic groups, including black and Hispanics and Native this Americans, families with low income, and those living in rural areas. The COVID-19 pandemic was a stark reminder of the need for urgent, sustained action. As more there Americans no experienced hunger, action. we saw diet-related we diseases heighten the risk of severe COVID. And it's time we make real change. Have to I'm committed. To, I'm know. committed to taking bold steps that are going to help end hunger and enable <laughs> everyone, everyone to have access to affordable, healthy food and safe places to be physically active. Access to but food you can, now. We can't do this alone. Access I want to healthy your ideas. food, fam. So go to whitehouse.gov backslash hunger health conference to find out more about the conference and get involved. Together, let's build a healthier future for all Americans. Jesus Christ, that was painful. Like, let, like he, I'm doing everything. I'm taking bold action by talking about it. We're not going to do anything, though. We're That's not going to feed all the, the unhoused people. We're not going to house them. We're not going to do anything. We're not going to forgive student debt. We're not going to, we're not going to do any of this shit, right? We're, we're not going to give you health care. We're going to talk about COVID and all the things we did, all, which was pretty much nothing compared to what other countries did. People are screwed now. Like, I mean, it's just, it's, I mean, it's comedic pasta. It would be fully funny if we weren't living it. That's why, that's another reason why I'm so glad in a, in a way. And I say this, you know, and I feel bad because one of the things for me was like, I don't want to just leave 
because then who's going to be left to fight here, right? But that's one of the reasons why I'm so glad I'm getting the hell out of here because things are getting really bad here, guys. And I'm not exaggerating. They're getting really bad. You know, it's like uh, we're saying that all he does is talk, but he can barely even talk, fam. We can continue with this, uh, <laughs> this section. I'm not going to slow you down. No, yeah, but I mean, you're right. Like, he, I mean, it's just... He yeah, barely even I, talk. I, was, Oz was going... Zuh, 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 zuh. <laughs> It's cruel at this point to have him, but you know, what? What's no. your other choice, Kamala? Jesus Christ! Um, <laughs> so this this guy posted this right because the Democrats are supposed to get this. Can you do the Jimmy Dore laugh? The Democrats are ah! forced vote next week <laughs> on ah, Roe v. Wade decision. That thing, right? Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're to force the vote. On Roe v. Wade. <laughs> no, they're not. No. I swear to God. Like, why didn't I catch this? I swear to God. And no, this guy's like, yeah. why are they doing this? Because they have to end the filibuster. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. He's absolutely right. But like, <laughs> this is what they're doing, Pasa. You, this, this is theatrics. More theatrics here. This is. I want to. I want to take all of these people and f- French Revolution them out of existence. Next week. The U.S. Senate is going to vote on legislation to codify women's right to seek abortion into federal law. Chuck the schmuck, Schumer said from the Senate floor. Schumer will move to tee up the bill on Monday. So we're going to be looking for that theatrics on Monday, setting up an initial vote for Wednesday. It will be the second vote Schumer has forced on the issue. The Senate rejected a similar bill in a 46 to 48 vote earlier this year with Senator Joe Manchin voting with Senate Republicans, because that's part of the game. Democrats have made changes to the bill to address concerns. Oh, and get this, shore up support within their conference. That includes striking a non-binding, quote, finding section that among other provisions referred to restrictions on abortion as, here we go, perpetuating white supremacy and called it a tool of gender oppression. It's not clear if those changes will be enough to get all 50 Democrats Manchin indicated that he hadn't yet seen the updated text. And Senate Majority Whip Dick Durbin, Democrat from Illinois, said he wasn't sure if they would be able to pick up Manchin's vote. This, so basically they're telling you it's not going to happen, but they're also telling you this is white supremacy while they're, they they're, they just gave $33 billion to the Azov Battalion and Nazis, essentially. I mean, that's it's essentially to for weapons, right? Yeah, that you know where they end up in the hands of Russians. Yeah, because the Russians are constantly talking about it. They're like, "Thanks for the weapons." Yeah. Constantly confiscating them before they get into the hands <laughs> they need to get into. You know what I'm saying half of them get blown up, half of them <laughs> get into the Russians. Very little is getting to the. But you know what? Here's the thing: the money's flowing, comes out of our printing press into the military industrial complex's pocket, and then therefore, you know what? Inflation. I know inflation, and then what are we left with? Seven dollars of gas or. Seven dollars a gallon for uh, gasoline out here, maybe sometime coming soon. It's ridiculous, you know. And, and how many homeless people on the streets and stuff? If we took thirty-three billion dollars and we subsidized it with our own American people for gas money, that would probably help out a lot of fucking people in this country. It really would. But instead, we got to give thirty-three billion to Ukraine, a situation in which we propagated, we pushed a purple government, we're responsible for. You know, it's just. It's mind blowing and it's just amazing that people don't pick up on this stuff. I mean, at what point are you going to wake up, ladies and gentlemen? At what point? Yeah. And and <laughs> speaking about somebody who finally woke up. <laughs> yeah. So are they going to wake up though because I was talking to somebody um I forget who was I talking to. I think I was talking to one of our gen- journalist friends and um they were like the revolution isn't going to happen in the United States. And it's not. I don't I really don't think it is. You know, for the longest time I was like trying, you know, I was like, yeah, let's do it. Let's make it happen. Let's see if people are just I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon here. And and it's it's for a lot of reasons among the the biggest is propaganda, right? People are so propagandized here. And you know, we're censored a lot of us that like if we were able to transmit to, you know, millions of people um <laughs> like and have a network that we could, you know, that would do that, then I think things would be different, but look what they did to the network that was even slightly, you know, just (laughs) oppositional to what they were saying. They got rid of it. They get rid of anything that is oppositional. So I don't think it's going to happen here. I think the revolution is going to happen in the global South. 
And well, it's never going to happen here because people don't agree with each other. We're split. They have the people divided. That's one thing they have really accomplished yeah. that is the ruling class is the fact that we're divided. And I think it's very easy for people like me, you, you know, Glory, when we get out in the streets, Steve, we see that. We can we can understand where can we agree on. We can see the greater danger, right, which is the ruling class with that 1%, you know, that not even the 1%, that 0.005% or whatever, that small, small group and stuff like that. And until they're dealt with, you know what I'm saying, nothing's ever going to change. But when they are dealt with, then we can all get in a room as human beings and decide what's best for all of us. But until they're gone, forget about it. And the one thing they have accomplished more than anything is keeping us divided by golly, gosh darn it, golly gee, we are divided. It's the 50s again, fam. So one of the people that is an instrument of division, right? Because so what happened is, you know, after the rant we showed the other day where Anna was, you know, attacking everybody and saying, everybody, I'm done with all of them. And she, like I said, she started with Republicans and then she even went after the Democrats. And then I don't think we showed the whole thing, but she then talked about the squad. And um, that video went like viral because the Republicans were sharing it, making fun of it because they thought she was being ridiculous. And she was being ridiculous. Like it, it, it was ridiculous. And um, so she responded, right, to these Republicans that she, went back to blaming that because a lot of people were like oh my god Anna came around she's actually saying the squad she's criticizing the squad and you know and Jimmy shared her 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 like he was laughing right he was like oh because she's she started saying the same thing that a lot of us have been saying forever right and and I was like I'll give her a week or so <laughs> she took 24 hours before she went back before yeah, she yeah. went back and back moonwalked, right? As you like to say, and blamed Republicans again. And the Anna Anna is a really useful tool for liberals and for um, the right too, because they think a lot of the conservatives think that that's what the left is, right? And you couldn't be more wrong. You, I couldn't be more different than Anna Kasparian. I mean, two completely different ideological views. Yet she considers herself on the left, and so do I. Mm -hmm. Right. So does it doesn't matter anymore what is left. I mean, I, it's just it to me, it's just it's like I don't want to be associated. Yeah. If you if you conservatives, Republicans, whatever you are, think that that's the left. I, I don't want to be associated with that because that's not what I believe. I don't react like that. I'm, I'm not I'm not going to make this about bipartisan or partisan bullshit that we know it's not. We know the Democrats are just as guilty of manip manipulating as the Republicans. We This is tiring already to say this all the time. Right. Yeah. So terrible. You yeah. You want to say anything before I play the video? No, just everybody continue to hit that like button. Over 500 people chilling out on YouTube, and about 90 people, uh, almost 100 on the rock band. So please hit the hit the thumbs up. Uh, and then, fam, I have an idea what we can do for charity after after we play Anna. Let me just bounce it off you and, and tell me what you think. Okay. Welcome to TYT. I'm your host, Anna Kasparian. And conservatives calling me out on social media saying Anna Kasparian had a meltdown. Yeah, they you shared did. video from the show yesterday where I was specifically calling out the Republican Party in forcing women to bring to term fetuses without any say over their own bodies. While also, by the way, fighting aggressively against any type of social spending program, any type of regulation that would make childcare affordable for people, that would create, you know, a social safety net so parents could be parents and so children could be raised in a happy, healthy environment, if that's genuinely what they want. They shared that rant acting as if my meltdown was totally unwarranted. And I'm so happy they're doing it because please let them know. Let them know, folks. Let Americans know what the right wing really stands for in this country. They want to force you to bring to term fetuses. They want you to have babies that they will then abandon the second that baby is born. The second it's born. No paid family leave, no affordable child care, nothing well, to help you me. with Democrats your medical are offering bills, that, right? your maternity Democrats bills are offering that? Okay. if you don't happen to have health care. Because, I mean, the one thing that Republicans never want to talk about, and I wish Democrats would force them to talk about, but it turns out Democrats don't really talk, they don't want to talk about these issues either, is the fact that they want to screw you, that they want to empower the corporate elite in call. this country to continue to rob you. I think. That's the Republican Party. Keep sharing my video. You're doing me a favor. 
love every minute of it. She's just yesterday. Awesome. Yep. Do you think she had a phone call? She definitely got a phone call. <laughs> she got an email, a phone call or a talk and stuff like that. But I do have an idea, fam. Democrats. <laughs> we don't want to talk about that. <laughs> I mean, your president Democrats said don't that. Democrats don't offer uh, any of the shit she said yep. Republicans offer. Don't offer. They don't. Go, go ahead. I was just about to say the president, the Democratic president that she's talking about once said that it shouldn't be just up to a woman to decide to do with with, with her body when it's, it's pertaining to. I wish I would have put that in the folder. I mean, yeah. literally, I, literally, literally a long time ago. And this is the guy, you know what I'm saying? And and uh, I have an idea, fam. Guys, let's try to get make this happen. Fam Fiorella will debate Anna Kasparian on anything. <laughs> on whether the Democrats are just as bad as the Republicans. And we'll finish up the night. I will have a steel cage MMA fight with Chen Kuger if he accepts my thing. And we'll get in the cage. We'll get in the octagon and work it out if he wants, because that will raise a lot of bucks. I know people would like me to see that happen. Come on. <laughs> me and Chunk in the ring. I think they would like to see me and Anna in the ring. <laughs> yeah, they, you're going too far now. <laughs> They're like this. Let's keep it I PG mean, over well, here. Yeah. Fam, I mean, it's just I, this woman. And you, she, like I said, she's perfect because the right the right hates people like her. You know what I mean? Like, she's perfect. for Like, they are going to continue making fun of her to no end. And she's going to continue talking back. She's like, per, she's like AOC yeah. in that regard, right? It's like, it's like they do this. And the thing is, like, none of what she said it, like what she said is true. Republicans don't support that, but neither do Democrats. So my whole thing with these people is that they exist to continue mentally brainwashing you to think that it's progressive to think that Democrats can be reformed. Yeah. Right. And we found out very quickly that's not a possibility. We've been doing this for a while now. And we we tried. We we gave those people the benefit of the doubt. They said, hey, we can go in the system and, and have a and fix it. We can fix it. We can reform it. Guess what? It didn't work. OK, well, then we can have a two prong uh, system where we can reform the Democratic Party and then go outside the party, too. That also didn't work yeah. because we don't have fair elections either. Right. And you can't just go third party anymore because we don't have fair elections. So it, so it's just like this this thing where as long as people like her exist, to me, they're more dangerous because they keep you believing that Republicans and Democrats are any different. And they're not. And they will they will say they are. They will say there's still a difference. You're crazy to say they're not different. No, there's very little difference like it, it's they use those differences to divide us and as pasta said that is one of the biggest hurt i think it's the biggest hurdle um the division through the propaganda from these people for us coming together and mm -hmm. and actually fighting the real enemy right yeah. and, and it's so, the wrong conversation too fee right i know we're gonna yeah. the video I, wh why are we talking about why there are so many unwanted pregnancies that's where you fix it. That therefore everybody, if they were truly, ha if they were truly like all about the issue or the side they stood on, whether it's hey, a woman's right to choose, hey, we want less abortions, then fix the actual problem. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I said the other day, I know the dudes, he's in the chat right now. I said uh, I misspoke the other day. I said Iran and Iraq went through a civil war. It wasn't a civil war. It was a war between two countries, neighboring countries, where a million people died. And the steps that Iran took after was to actually go to the core and fix the problem. How do we have so many unwanted pregnancies? That's what we should be fixing. And there is a theory out there that education, a good uh, working conditions, a good working class, you know what I'm saying, will help that. If you give more opportunities out there, then there should be less unwanted pregnancies. And that's, you know, once again, I don't, I can't stand on that, but it makes a lot of sense. So why don't we try to fix it from the core, from the actual problem? And that's what we're not talking about. This is just simply a distraction for once again, to talk about what we talked about, to keep people divided. And you said this the other day, fam, this is the most, one of the biggest wedge issues out there. One of the biggest, you know what I'm saying? And they just brought it back and resurrected it at a time where government across the board, Democrat and Republican are falling on their face and failing. It's like the, it's the controlled demolition of the United States economy is happening right before our very own eyes. And it ain't just one side. It's the whole freaking government. So throw this issue out there. We don't even talk about the people like, oh, we don't even care how it got leaked. It got leaked. Uh, come on. They're trying to divide us. Yeah. And I have, uh, I have a video that I just did where I, I lay out exactly, you know, what I think this is being used to distract from. But uh, we, we have this other video I want to play with Jimmy on it. 
uh, the other day. So let's go ahead and play that video. If we're gonna sit around and wait for our elected lawmakers to protect us from these religious zealots and these right-wing authoritarians, man, we have another thing coming. How many times do we need to be disappointed by them? I'm done with them. I am personally, I don't speak for everyone in this network, I wanna be clear, I'm speaking for myself. I'm done with them, completely. The Democratic Party, every single one of them, that includes the squad, I don't care anymore. They have not delivered. They have not delivered. I'm done. It's Welcome time to, to organize, create, organize. Boy, she's only about five years too late. <laughs> and then she went back. So she said that before, right? And then she went back. Ooh, That's why I think she had a talking to or something. Because you saw how she was like, Democrats, you know, she was like brushing off the Democrat part. Like, can't trust these people. These people get paid to be propagandists. That's something, you know, some of us will never do. But if the money's good enough, some people will do it. And that's that's the reality, right? That that that's, you know, <laughs> the network she works for is you you can look back at the Robbie receipts this article from years ago. You can look at all of that. And by the way, another thing I want to say before we move on to what I think is is really this whole thing is being used for. Um, it's not just a right wing thing. There are le people on the left that are anti uh, that are anti um, abortion. People in countries like Nicaragua that we visited, people in a lot of Latin American countries that are to the left economically of the United States yeah. are anti-abortion. Whether yeah. it's religious, whether it's what for whatever reason, they are. And that that doesn't mean that, you know, I I you know, I'm pro-choice. I've said it many times, right? But for me it, it's a matter of neither of these people are interested in actually solving this issue. They're interested in fundraising off this issue, especially the Democrats. Especially the Democrats. Republicans too. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of hypocrisy. People like Anna were calling everybody anti-vaxxers uh and for for being anti-mandate my to body me, my choice there right it's my body my choice right, right. it's my body yeah. my choice oh that doesn't that's different it's hey, different hey i'm ready i'm gonna do oh that was my michael jackson when he flips the hat <laughs> and, he, and he goes <laughs> let's try to figure out what you were doing and he moonwalks <laughs> oh. <laughs> and then he moonwalks okay right that was back, pretty right? good yeah well that's the whole michael jackson flip yeah. I mean, okay. So, guys, this is what I think this is about. And you'll, you'll tell me if you agree or not. I did this quick video. It's two minutes, 20 seconds. Uh, this is what I think. It's a distraction. I think it's talking about the Supreme Court's 98-page leaked draft majority opinion for overturning Roe v. Wade. But the question everyone should be asking is, is this even real? Or is this a PR stunt? Like clockwork, the progressive Democrats and liberals organized into the equivalent of a women's march parade outside of DC. Congresswoman Elizabeth Warren blamed Republicans, AOC tweeted. Combination of what Republicans have been fighting for, angling for, for decades. In the mantra, my body, my choice went from canceled truckers and right wingers against mandates to cheering on the brave women who demand bodily autonomy. And who's leaking this info so perfectly timed with upcoming midterms as the perfect wedge issue for strong democratic fundraising and a perfect distraction from the fact that the US government just sent another $33 billion towards Ukraine. More money for more weapons that end up arming the remaining Nazi army in the country. Not to mention distracting them from recent attacks on adversarial journalism as PayPal has banned several independent media news sites that dared stray away from the accepted narrative on Russia and Ukraine. And let's not forget the 80,000 page Pfizer drop that greatly contradicts what the CDC was saying and greatly validates what many who were banned and censored said from the beginning. Political reported the leak, Justice John Roberts confirmed it, but the AP reiterated that no ruling is expected before the court's term is up in late June or July. There are 11 state primaries in May, 18 in June, and one in July that all precede the likely timeline for an official ruling by SCOTUS. Hot take? The establishment, especially Democrats, orchestrated this entire thing because they're failing and are really unpopular. The leak allows them to fundraise on this and specifically allows the establishment incumbents 
to push that voters must choose Democrats because this election is too important. Joe Biden himself admits it in the last paragraph of his statement saying, it will fall on voters to elect pro-choice officials this November. And finally, Democrats could have long codified Roe v. Wade. In fact, they could do it now by getting rid of the filibuster, but they won't. Ask yourself why. Perhaps you already have the answer. Yeah, Pam. Good video, Pam. So, well, so I think it's it's if you look at the dates, right, of of when this would happen, it completely goes along with the primaries coming up. Oh yeah. And I don't it's so obvious to me. I don't understand why. And oh, by the way, yes, nobody's talking about the 80,000 pages of the Pfizer release, which we will we will be talking about some of yeah. the stuff that's in there. We got to talk about on Monday. I have a bunch of COVID stuff to go over too as well. 